Okay, I just wanted to quickly show the differences here between uh, these two lathes. Uh, we've got in the front here a uh, Emco Unimat 3, made in Austria. It's a really nice little machine. Uh, this one happens to uh, be in great shape. It's uh, I just pulled this three-jaw chuck off of here. Uh, the three-jaw chuck was uh, on this spindle. It looks like it's had a little bit of uh, oh, maybe some woodworking done with a pen making or whatever. And I wanted to point out the uh, similarities and differences between these lathes. This is the uh, Unimat PC. Uh, this one uh, has the motor off right now. The motor is available. It's just not on here. I've removed it for a little bit of maintenance. And uh, this one uh, has a, a, a the motor is uh, not is quite as easy to remove because this motor is not used in the milling column like uh, like it is on this one. But uh, similarities. They both have the same uh, internal uh, uh, diameter, uh, internal construction on the spindle. So. This uh, dead center actually will fit both lathes. So the tooling that will fit the uh, Unimat 3 will also fit the Unimat PC. Uh, we take a look at the chucks. They're uh, essentially the same. This is a three-jaw MCO chuck. This one actually goes with this. And uh, the uh, Unimat 3 has the same, the same chuck. Uh, really nice little chucks. They, they seem to work well. They seem to hold up pretty well too. This one does have a steady rest. So let's talk about differences. The, uh, there's a pretty big difference in the uh, admitted length between the two lathes. So uh, Amco 3 is about oh, probably a good inch uh, less uh, length available on, on, on this one than there is on the uh, PC. And uh, also the uh, uh, turning diameter is quite a bit smaller itself so about and you know, it's probably about a three inch lathe whereas this one's probably a four even maybe close to five inch lathe so this one will handle a lot larger diameter uh, the, the three has a, a zamac or a, which is zinc or an aluminum uh, die cast cross slide which is uh, you know sufficient but uh, not particularly uh, not, not particularly good uh, and rigid, and it's quite a bit smaller. We see the hand wheel smaller the, than the uh, the Unimat PC. So this is quite a bit larger, and this uh, this casting is all cast iron. So uh, this is a much uh, you know, more sturdy and rigid system uh, between the tool and the bedways. Let's talk briefly about the bedways. Uh, we can see here the bedways are uh, oh they're probably an inch and a half apart here there the centers are a good two inches apart this is actually a little wider stance uh, while we have a nice cast iron bed here on the Unimat 3 which is a very actually a very good bed for the size of lathe it is this has some large diameter uh, rods which uh, are probably uh, every bit as stiff as necessary for what this lathe will produce in terms of torque at the uh, work and uh, tool interface. So uh, this lathe is not going to be springy. It's much, much uh, heavier uh, construction. This is about a three-quarter inch diameter rod. Uh, this, this, uh, these rods are much uh, larger in diameter than on the, uh, the, the DB and the SL uh, Unimats. So uh, a much better, much better lathe than the, than the uh, smaller Unimats. And this would be, I would think, uh, probably an intermediate lathe, somewhere in uh, between the capabilities of the, uh, the SL and DBs and uh, the Unimat PC. Uh, good motor mounting or, or mill column mounting. This has a casting uh, it's built into the back of the, of the uh, bedway. This has uh, a stamped metal piece and uh, a column uh, socket. So, and uh, we see that the uh, diameter on this is oh, probably about an inch and a half to an inch, uh, inch and a quarter, somewhere in there, quite large for the milling head. I don't have the milling head for uh, either of these lathes, but uh, they're, they're uh, a, nice, a nice addition. Uh, Tailstock, uh, this one just seems to have a little bit beefier uh, system for holding uh, the uh, uh, tailstock in place. And, of course, being it's got a wider stance, this is going to be a little less... Uh, uh, prone to any kind of uh, movement than this guy. Uh, the uh, undercarriage uh, clamp on this one is a simple piece of steel. On this one it's actually a full clamp 
that goes across both uh, both the arms of the uh, of the bedways here. So those are the similarities and differences between the two. I, oh, I should mention this too. The uh, uh, this this lathe has a full uh, gearing system for uh, driving the carriage at uh, various uh, various speeds, and those are controlled by the gears that are uh, used here. And there's a full chart, uh, much like a like a full grown lathe would have for uh, setting up the the gearing on the uh, carriage drive. Uh, and also the belts are flat. They're very flat and they're very thin. So actually the transmitted power on this lathe is, I expect it to be quite a bit more efficient than on this lathe where we actually use this rather large O-ring. And the O-ring, uh, whenever you flex any kind of rubber component, you actually uh, produce quite a bit of heat. The thicker the cross section and the smaller the radius that you uh, that you uh, uh, go through, particularly on the small side, you generate a lot of heat within the belt, and of course that heat represents lost power, power that's lost in the transmission uh, between the motor and the uh, and the and the shaft. So this is actually uh, I expect this lathe would actually deliver a higher percentage of its power to the spindle than this lathe, even though I have a, a belief uh, that this the motor that uh, would normally be on this lathe is actually a little more capable in the DC motor that's in this one. So while the DC motor is nice, it does give you the full, uh, the full uh, uh, range of uh, speeds, uh, which, is, which is a nice feature. It does not particularly have a great deal of starting torque. So this one uh, is a, has an induction motor on it, uh, or, or is it a universal? I can't recall, actually. But uh, I think the motor is actually more capable on this one. But I have a tendency belie to believe that this one uh, would actually have better uh, power ending up at the spindle than the uh, Unimat 4, or sorry, the Unimat 3. So that's uh, a couple of opinions, a couple of uh, uh, thoughts on the similarities and differences between the two lathes. And this is Lucas signing off.